Hey everyone, welcome in. So today, a little bit different video than I have been doing recently. Uh, today I'm gonna go through some pro tips in Comfy Wire. I've had some people reach out about, you know, how to label your images better when you're saving them. Um, I have some other pretty cool tips that I, I use regularly. So I thought I'd go through some of those and hopefully you find it helpful. So the first one I wanna talk about is this save image node. So you can see there's a file prefix here. I think we all kind of know how the file prefix works, right? It outputs this value um, with an incrementing number on the back end. But there's some other pretty cool things that you can do that I don't know if everyone knows about. So the first one is you can put things into a folder by just doing, so this is gonna go into the demo folder if I do demo slash. So that puts it into the demo folder and then you can just label it by date if you want to. So if you do date colon year, 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 dash capital M, capital, capital M dash DD. So that will put the date in year, month, day format. And you can flip these around if you want to see the date in a different way. So now when I run this, I'll just show you real quick. If I go to my output folder, I now have this demo folder and you can see I have the date attached to it. Okay, so if you wanna, if you wanna organize your, your images by date, you know, it, sometimes it's just helpful to, to know, oh yeah, I remember like a week ago, I generated this image and I wanna go back and get it. That's how I would do it, okay? And you can see it's in my demo folder. So demo, date, okay? And then there's another cool thing here that you can do where you use the label of a node with its input and you can get that in your file name at the end. So if you want to, you know, if you if you really wanted to put the whole prompt in, you could do that. If you wanted to save it with the resolution, you could do that. If you want to save it with the, you know, the checkpoint model you used, all, all different options. You know, if you're trying to test, like, what does steps do? What does CFG do? You can, you can, let, let's actually do it like that. I'll, I'll do one here where my file name is ksampler dot, oh, sorry. Make sure your capitalization is exactly, exactly the same. And if you change the label here, make sure you also change the label in the uh, file name prefix path as well. Um, so ksampler dot steps and so that should so let's run a few and we'll do 10 20 30 40 and we should get a an image for each of those okay so 10 20 30 40 okay and you can see here let me adjust this a little bit all right and you can see using the case sampler dot steps now we were able to prefix the image with the number of steps in the case sampler node. So you can do this with literally any node you want, as long as you use that title of it, dot whatever the input is, then, then you can use this. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That's something that I use a lot day to day when I'm testing different things. It just makes it, you know, if I fixed the seed here, then I could have easily told, I could have easily tested you know, what a 10 versus 40 steps look like. I could see, especially when using like one video, if you're trying to evaluate which steps is best, using something like this would be really helpful for that. Same thing with CFG. You know, if you want to test what do CF C what do different CFG levels look like, it's another way, okay? So that's it for the, you know, output path. Hopefully that's helpful. I really like the those tips. So the next one I wanted to look at is a couple cool copy paste type things. So the first one that kind of blew my mind when I first did it was if you just so I'm, I'm pressing control C right now to copy. And then if you want to copy all of the connections, so it just keeps all of the inputs. All you need to do is control shift V when you copy. And you can see I, I didn't have to connect anything. It just connected them all up for me. Now the even cooler thing, I'll show I'll connect this up real quick. If I copy, you know, let's let's just copy a, 
a bunch of stuff here. I'm gonna, just to add some variation, I'm gonna remove the VAE to code. If I copy all of this and then, oops, sorry, I also don't want the load checkpoint. If I copy all of this and then control shift paste it, it copies all the connections from all of the nodes that you need. So if you, if you wanna make some changes to a workflow, but you don't wanna delete what's already there, this is a, a really awesome way to, to trial that. Um, it's just, it, this is a super helpful thing. So now, so I'm gonna delete what I just did here. All right, and we're back to our original workflow. So the next thing I wanna show you is a auto bypass. And well, there's a few things here. So let's start. Actually, I'm gonna create a copy of this again, same way we just did it. So control C to create the copy and then control V to copy it with the node connections. And then now I wanna be able to put both of these in a group so that I, so that I can quickly turn them on and off to be able to use them, all right? So if I just highlight all of this and I press control G, that creates a, that creates a group. I don't have to right click and go to add group for selected nodes. That just creates a group for me. So then I want to do, I'll just say group one. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this one down below. Uh, control G and then I'm going to say group two. Okay, now I'm going to put a couple different prompts in here. So I'll say like a blue lagoon with a sea monster in it. Okay, and then I want to be able to like quickly swap between these. So there's a there's a node package out there called the RG3 nodes. So search for that in the ComfyUI manager, you'll be able to install it and then look for fast bypasser and you want the fast groups bypasser. Okay, so what this does is it allows you to turn off and on groups quickly. So for example, all right, I wanna run the Glassdoor workflow. All right, so we turn off group two and it only runs the Glassdoor one. Okay, so now say I, I wanna just run the Blue Lagoon one. So I turn off group one and turn on group two and then I run it. Okay, so that's a really quick way to set up workflows where you don't have to have multiple workflow files. You can put it all in the same file and then just use the group bypasser. I recently used this on one of my inpainting video workflows and hopefully you all found that really helpful to just be able to do it all on one page, not have to not have to go to a different file in order to continue on with the workflow. Okay. So that that's all I have for pro tips today. You know, the, these are just some things that I think were are kind of cool when I when I'm working in Comfy UI and I think that they're helpful productivity gains that I see are meaningful on a daily basis. Um, if you found this helpful, head over to my Patreon. It's completely free. All the workflows in it are 100% free. They will always be 100% free. There are a couple donation tiers there if you want to help support the channel, but I don't charge for any of these workflows. People do a ton of work putting out these open source models and I'm not gonna charge you just to teach you how to use them. Uh, I believe that open source software should be open source all the way through from downloading software to learning to getting trained up on it. I believe that whole process should be free for open source software. That's it for this video. Thank you for following along. Follow me on my socials anywhere you can follow me it helps me out to generate more content and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye bye.